Hello everyone, I'm Priya Yadav, Senior Assistant Editor with Elitz Technomedia. A very warm welcome to the Elitz Di Digital Governance Summit Haryana, which is being brought to you by Elitz Technomedia and Microsoft India. It is true that technology is transforming human life. Elitz Technomedia's eGov magazine, which is Asia's first and only magazine dedicated to e-governance, has been at the forefront of bringing out how exactly technology has touched not just our lives, but redefine the manner in which governments function and services are delivered. The objective of the panel discussion, leveraging technology to meet with challenges of last mile connectivity in government sector, is to highlight the many ways in which the government of Haryana has transformed itself and adapted amazingly well to e-governance rising to the challenges of pandemic era. The panelists of the discussion, I extend very warm welcome Dr. J. Ganesan, Director, Secondary Education, School Education Department, Government of Haryana, an Indian Administrative Service Officer of 2006 batch. Dr. Ganesan is a dental surgeon by qualification and has worked as Deputy Commissioner of Sirsa and Karnal districts. He has held positions like Chief Administrator of Huda and Chief Administrator of Haryana State Agricultural Marketing Board. Mr. Hitesh K. Arora, Deputy Secretary, Haryana State Board of Technical Education, is a senior government officer working in the field of governance, facilitation and support of technical institutions in the state of Haryana. He's a graduate in mechanical engineering and has had more than 25 years of rich experience in both industry and academia, creating understanding and building synergy between the two. Dr. Anshu Singla, Superintendent of Police Kurukshetra, who did her MBBS in 2011 batch and became an IPS officer in 2014. She has served as additional SP in Rotak, Deputy Commissioner of Police in Faridabad and Superintendent of Police in Kurukshetra. We also have with us Mr. Aman Kumar, Deputy Secretary, Information, Public Relations and Languages, Government of Haryana. He has more than 10 year experience in IT projects of government and is a former cyber security scientist who has also worked at National Technical Research Organization. We also have with us Mr. Manish Chandan, who is heading the state e-mission team in Haryana for the past several years. Mr. Chandan has been at the forefront of implementation of key in initiatives of the state government. Mr. Deepak Pansil, head of NIC in Haryana, Who's, who's State Informatics Officer. Mr. Bansal has a rich experience of handling prestigious pro projects such as integrated finance management system, establishment of e-disha centers for delivery of citizen-centric services. I now welcome Mr. Sudesh Kokian, Kokian, Director Sales, Public Sector Business, Microsoft India who is an experienced sales leader with demonstrated history of working in the information technology and services industry, a strong sales professional skilled in sales, enterprise software and business alliances. He is our moderator for the panel discussion. Over to you, Mr. Kukian. Hi, welcome everybody. Uh, welcome to this uh, panel discussion. Uh, I will kickstart the uh, uh, discussion by formally welcoming each one of you for taking time out. Uh, I'm sure all your schedules are busy, uh, but it's really appreciated that you take time out from here, uh, from your busy schedules to come out and share your experience, share your knowledge uh, with, with, with everybody around so that people can kind of leverage uh, the knowledge and experience. I think the collective knowledge and experience that we have uh, here on this forum. Uh, I will... Uh, uh, I think uh, starting, I'd like to start with education. I think that's 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 the future of the country. Uh, I'd like to maybe start the first question with um, uh, Hitesh ji. Uh, the, I see the education sector has kind of uh, witnessed the power of, uh, uh, you know, the uh, and I think it's not only witnessed, I think it's also leveraged uh, the power of technology and uh, innovation. Uh, what are the new opportunities uh, uh, that we we uh, we can unlock uh, with uh, innovation and technology, Hitesh sir, uh, to make uh, education more powerful in the country? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, you know, we as a Arena State Board of Technical Education, we have the responsibility to uh, train our uh, you know, technical students. Now, uh, COVID has made a very large impact on everyone. 
because from the last two years, the online offline classes, you know what, like everybody knows about that. So what I'll tell you, like what we have already done just in a brief and then see what more can be done. Where are the opportunities lying into that? We already done through uh, because everyone have done in the school education and everywhere they have run through the all uh, online platform, Google Meet, Zoom, WhatsApp group, whatever it is. And uh, even Harana government initiative, everyone is using for e-office or HMS websites, you know, video group videos, e-contents on all the websites of uh, departmental examination through online mode, okay. through proctoring and all that. Uh, certification through online mode, even the soft skill training of the corporate we have arranged through uh, okay, online okay. modes. Yeah. And the virtual labs also. Now these are the uh, things probably each one has tried, maybe government, maybe private. But uh, since this technology is going to be a, a, a key bearer for uh, upcoming times, and we always uh, agree that uh, people will be going for the blended learning based on technology when we talk about NEP and when we talk about uh, uh, our future, which is uh, which has COVID has shown us. So I believe uh, there are two, three things which need to be done. The foremost important uh, part I think is called the gamification of the education technology. This has a lot of scope. There is a lot of opportunity in the gamification because uh, we online learning has been kind of monotonous. Online learning has been kind of boring and students are not getting interest. When we create like we already know the examples of, uh, you know, uh, Google Word coach, uh, you know, this Khan Academy, you know, the ODA classes. Uh, there are some coins, there are some badges, there are some uh, something stickers which the students win and uh, you know, there is a competition kind of thing. So gamification of technology, education technology is I, I see there's a lot of opportunity in this uh, particular area. And uh, the second point which I like to emphasize is the education metaverse. The metaverse like uh, the treasure hunt. You know, the students go for the hunting of some treasure. You know? So when there is an interest of the students and they you know, come into new avatar. So when we uh, use this education technology into the maybe technical education, maybe higher education or maybe school education. So the interest will dwell and we'll be able to make some tangible impact on uh, our education system. Uh, third thing is that when we uh, we have faced it uh, like in our intern uh, internships in trainings, so these internships and trainings in the online mode have been just a learning kind of a platform. There had been no real uh, project uh, from the industry and the delivery of those, those things. Uh, I'll tell you a very interesting example um, uh, of uh, one of the IITs and, and they are doing it uh, like they have formed a WhatsApp group of the students. And any industry, any industry can uh, offload their uh, problem and the amount. Suppose an industry says I want to solve this problem and the amount to be paid is 10,000 rupees. So they put on that WhatsApp group of the students and the students, uh, who, those who are interested, they get uh, into, into these things. So we are trying also trying to create that kind of uh, things. Uh, and and uh, in this way, I, I believe uh, the project's problem and the pricing of the students and uh, you know, uh, the learning will be very good and and there will be a lot of uh, interesting things will happen so i uh, see the opportunities in these three areas in education metaverse in uh, this gamification and this internship and trainings on uh, uh, actual real life uh, trainings through online mode also uh, very interestingly put uh, uh, thank you for that uh, elaborate kind of an explanation uh, hitesh ji i think i'll just like to uh, ask the next question to uh, ganesh uh, ganeshan sir uh, Ganeshan sir, uh, you know, uh, secondary education is, I think, uh, considered to be the foundations, foundation for the students' mental development. Uh, how are we leveraging technology or what are what, what technologies are we kind of adopting, uh, adopting in government schools to provide uh, uh, the, these, you know, the, uh, secondary education students a better learning experience? And how do we try and help them for a better mental development, Ganesh sir? So uh, to answer your question, uh, the government of Haryana has uh, always uh, looked uh, beyond academics. And uh, over the years, uh, there has been a, a greater emphasis on vocational training. And uh, as you know, the national education policy uh, brings out a greater role uh, for the vocational education. And the government of Haryana has always been in the forefront of doing so. Uh, in uh, uh, the government schools of Haryana, uh, there are about 1,074 vocational labs uh, which have been set up and it, which includes ICT also. And as of now, we are training about 1.8 lakh children in uh, 12 different uh, vocations. 
and uh, uh, and uh, in the in the uh, last year in the year 2021 90 of our students received placements also after uh, schooling itself and 20 got internships and about 11 students have become entrepreneurs so looking at the positive trend uh, the government of haryana has set up incubation centers we must be one of the very few states which have set up 50 incubation centers in our school which apart from vocational training teaches entrepreneurship to the uh, children so that is one thing we have embarked upon and in the upcoming year we are also in the process of providing toolkits to the children who pass out of these uh, vocational lab so that they have something to start their uh, business so vocational training has been one of the very important uh, focus areas apart from that we have also been focusing on uh, giving them some 21st century skills uh it which includes this coding and robotics also uh if you take coding about 8000 of our government school children they have been learning uh, this uh, coding language uh, python so they are basically uh, yeah so uh, they are uh, understanding how to uh, design art how to create games and write codes in python today so that is one very big thing which is happening and in robotics uh, about we have uh, the something called as the model sanskriti school so in about 137 model sanskriti school children are being uh, taught this uh, robotics also and uh, you must be aware of this unicef uh, app uh, this is called the unicef ua uh, uh, bot through a, through a whatsapp bot Uh, through which this four uh, 21st century skills are being uh, taught to children haryana is one of uh, the very few states in which about uh, 2 lakh students as of now have enrolled uh, for this uh, futuristic uh, program so as you rightly said secondary education is, it becomes the basic uh, foundation for the children so we sh- apart from focusing on academics we have been uh, constantly focusing on vocational education as well as on uh, providing them the 21st century skills also thank you i think that's a, a unique uh, really concept of having incubators at that level thank you so much uh, ganeshan sir uh, i'll just want to get uh, uh, murishandan's uh, uh, view also on how the uh, uh, how the governments are kind of uh, uh, managing this uh, the technology influx that is kind of happening uh, sir in what way is uh, cmt is modernizing the government offices <laughs> and processes in haryana as per you what are the ma- major challenges that you face with implementation of e services and uh, digitalization uh munish sir thank you uh, thank you elites for giving the opportunity to uh, come and share the thoughts um as i as you mentioned that smt is an integral part of uh, state and uh, uh, the the team is uh, from the government of india we are working here uh, uh, to achieve the vision of cashless paperless faceless and secure governance and uh, i must say that uh, uh, during the last two years uh, during the covid outbreaks the confidence of the government towards the in house teams that has gone tremendously uh, that because that time uh, no private player was available to work uh, uh, everybody was having uh, difficulties they were facing so the teams in house teams capacities were built in uh, that uh, that the trust government trust is there now so uh, we were able to generate we were able to generate work we were able to uh, build capacities and uh, strengthen the teams for in house uh, application development and then accordingly roll out so end to end delivery from conceptualization to uh, roll outs that was uh, uh, you can say enhanced uh, during this phase so with regard to uh, the confidence uh, the government is already uh, um, th- that is working on uh, strengthening the teams scmt is working with the with primarily the advisory role consultancy and uh, the development part with support of other organizations uh, uh, like hartron uh, nic and uh, uh, other wings uh, in house capacities are so big that haryana is uh, far far ahead from other states <clears throat> so uh, the best part is that the honorable cm himself uh, being the it minister as well he takes so much interest in the development and he even um, um, goes to the very very uh, uh, small uh, small level changes also so he takes that much interest so that is uh, one important aspect the administration gives full support uh, if you ask for uh, the ch- challenges which we are facing so 
with the more and more usage of uh, IT applications, the more and more data is coming. So uh, what we feel that uh, with regard to the data mining and uh, uh, extraction of data with right kind of metadata with each uh, kind of uh, storage, that, that is a big challenge what I feel. And uh, we are also taking steps to uh, uh, enhance. Uh, we are working on towards this uh, uh, enhancing these things also. <clears throat> so these uh, storage requirements, uh, they are ever uh, increasing with the limited capacities in the data center that sometimes gets difficult to manage. But that also is being looked after and now uh, steps have been taken to increase that space as well, the compute and space as well. So majorly technology is not playing, uh, a uh, uh, that is not uh, difficult to manage, but how to handle that after the technology has given you a lot of data, that is what I feel that is a big challenge uh, at this stage. I just want to uh, probably also get a view from the uh, 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 from uh, uh, Dr. Anshu here. Uh, uh, sir, how 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 is uh, digital transformation enabling a more effective uh, communication between the Indian common man and the police? How well, how is the police been able to leverage uh, technology, and has that helped in being able to bridge that gap between the common man and the police? Good evening, everyone. First of all, thank you for having me on both and having me my views presented and ideas over. It's a pleasure, and, madam. Yeah. Uh, as far as policing is concerned, I think the use of technology has revolutionized police from a force which was visualized earlier for the enforcement or just for the upkeep or tackling law and order. Now, police has really transformed itself into a service delivery model. And I have some speaking example. One of the finest is our emergency response system, ERSS 112. Let me tell you, there are more than 60 services, 60 uh, uh, provisions for emergency, for instance, light, some first aid, stretcher, which are there. And in this, the real time location is shared and the people. And then the call and the location goes uh, to the headquarters. From there, it is given to the concerned field unit. And also, there is a system of very regular feedback on daily basis for the district SPs to give their monitoring. And then uh, there is a real-time location sharing. So the first and the most speaking example, and uh, in this, uh, there has been a very, very commendable political will and coordination and uh, the earlier problem which used to occur that whenever uh, uh, district boundaries used to but erss is now bound that they have to respond to the call they are not now by the jurisdictional boundaries they will definitely go and whichever location is geographically the closest the commendable feat can be judged from the very fact that on an average the response time is less than 20 minutes so this is the first change which i see in the effectiveness Second, uh, the use of technology. I think it is very much in uh, license for the uh, services part, I would say. Now, most of the services has be, uh, uh, you know, come to be digitalized. There is an online application form and also under the Right to Service Act. Now, uh, actually, the use of technology has evolved with the evolution of laws, which are very much public centric. That is uh, the key note here. And uh, uh, if their services are not provided well in time, they are uh, like 30 days or whatever. There are many uh, simple services like tenant verification or uh, you would say servant verification or there are some basic clearances. So either they are provided or they are deemed to be OK. Side. And uh, then the erring officials, there are we have salaries attached. So to me, it is a very, very big paradigm shift. Cutting out the human interface of it, you know, it fixes the time and uh, also the probability of being uh, the discretion which was there. So that has again been a great relief to the common citizen. Then we are also visualizing uh, in the traffic management. Now there are systems in the future which we realize that there will be GPS enabled monitoring, you know, where we were, we would. Uh, connect the data and real-time monitoring of the movement of the traffic. 
graphic is another interface which uh, which sort of affects the public citizens in this it is very very vital to mention that many of our junctions are now being monitored by cctvs and there is an electronized chalan system so again you know uh, there is a very famous saying that you know, the development or the first impression of a country when you land there or the city is by the traffic this is another area where uh, uh, the technology has helped us evolve a lot uh, also to uh, uh... Arpit Jain here, uh, who is also IPS Superintendent of Police. Uh, sir, uh, has data has has the police department leveraged data analytics and di digital technology, and has that really helped improve policing? Yes, I would say that definitely it has uh, helping in improving the policing because now the concept of predictive policing is coming. That we should be able to predict what kind of crime can place take place at what time at what place like if you see haryana that there is always a seasonal variation of crime like after the crop cutting there will be more uh, incidences of loot or taking money or something like that then there are season like in winter when there is fog there are more house breaking more burglaries etc there so if we can analyze proper data we can do proper data analytics then definitely we can come out with some actionable outputs which can be implemented in our patrolling, which can be implemented in our, our routine work. Like if you see the road accident also, I was also posted as Deputy Commissioner of Police Faridabad. So I have seen when we, do, we did analysis of where the uh, road accidents happens and uh, what are the timing, what are the places, then you will be surprised to see that it was, uh, it was, uh, uh, it was uh, very different from what our common sense tells. Like when there is a closing of the factories at around 5 or 6 p.m., most of the laborers come on the road. At that time, there were more road accidents at evening 5 or 6. And uh, the people who are dying are pedestrian who are moving on uh, their legs. So these are so after that, we were able to properly intervene there. We were, we were, we need to sensitize even pedestrian people also. Uh, likewise, uh, if we know that, uh, if we know the pro pre previous data of the criminals, like he has committed three crimes, he has committed four crimes, and where he has committed the crimes, then also we can get an outcome that what is his uh, future behavior will be. Uh, just liking to add to one or two important points in data analytics here uh, with the use of technology, we are using it in predictive policing also for the hotspot mapping so that we can use our resources selectively on that areas. And also uh, in monitoring of the behavior, which is very, very important in law and order, for example, in social media. We are using these data analytical and analytical tools, even in social media, behavioral screening so that we can predict what kind of law and order situation will arise or what time of crime behavior will arise. And let me tell you, we have mapped, uh, Haryana Police has mapped some of the very serious criminals by these tools. So technology has definitely helped us filter many things. And a word of mention to the crime and criminal uh, uh, tracking network system, CC, the CCTNS. CCTNS. There are uh, seven stages of prosecution, right from the registration of the FIR, the data maintenance. It is very difficult uh, from the physically to see from the register for each and every one. And this has now been linked to the biometrics. So eventually a system will evolve where the criminals won't be able to be caught free because of our strong systems and integrated technology. I'm really happy to hear that. And when you're talking about technology, how can we not talk about uh, artificial intelligence and cloud computing? So wanted to ask uh, Deepak ji the question, uh, sir, what is the role of artificial intelligence and cloud computing uh, to improve the uh, services in the state, to improve efficiencies and the services in the state? Actually in Haryana right now, uh, we are primitively introducing artificial intelligence slowly and slowly. Recently, we have uh, tried two projects uh, of artificial intelligence, one in uh, uh, health sector and one in our finance sector. In health sector, what we are doing is we are doing the predictive analysis of the consumption of drugs so that we, the state is able to save a considerable amount uh, by reducing the uh, order to, to the uh, uh, limited to the consumption 
by 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 assessing the patterns of the consumption moreover it also helps help the state government that we should be able to pinpoint in a particular area what all medicines are being consumed are in order with the past trends or not so that pill uh, phrase from the government hospital is stop okay uh, secondly uh, in uh, uh, in finance department we have been able to analyze and give a predictive analysis about the expenditure and the revenue so that state government is able to say has a huge saving on the interest being uh, incurred by the state by, by, by taking the debt from the open market sir right now we are working on two more projects one is predictive analysis about the uh, applying artificial intel intelligence in uh, screening the uh, ct scans of the brain to uh, brain uh, uh, brain and we can forehand declare that this particular patient whether it is going to have a tumor in future or not and same is the case with the uh, ultrasound of the ladies we are studying with that and we are doing this activity with the, with the help of pgim or chandigarh to so uh, to find out whether a particular the child of a particular lady will will be healthy or not sir uh, as far as compute uh, cloud computing is concerned it has came as savior during the uh, uh, covid period yes. because you know that there was no infrastructure was available in the market to procure at that time and we have to rely uh, for the resources which, which which were there in the uh, state government and you know 90% of the activities were done from how uh, from home so we have to basically switch the infrastructure from one application to uh, other application based upon the needs you will surprise to know that during covid in haryana there were around 38 applications which were solely created for management of covid only so we have to do for issuing the industrial passes we have to issue the uh, passes for uh, communication uh, communication and commuting and which has been appreciated by um, uh, uh, government of, um, uh, delhi high court also that haryana has done a tremendous job apart from this we have been we have received the, the this distress call that, that i don't have ration and we uh, that, uh, around that period we received around 70, uh, 70 lakh uh, calls so that so they 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 require ration and we have to analyze the data and see whether that person is getting any help from other sources maybe in, in terms of financial help or in a in kind, kind of food or whether the food is distributed so based upon that that uh, insight into the data we have been able to cull, uh, cull down that figure from 17 lakh to 3 lakh sir so uh, we have been able to provide that uh, to the right beneficiary that at the right time sir actually really interesting to see again how application of technology has happened i think an interesting question that comes up here is uh, while i think every department has been kind of leveraging technology uh, i think this question is to shri aman aman kumar sir uh, sir uh, with all this digitalization happening uh, what are the challenges that you see in preparing the workforce to adopt to this digital environment and to respond to this challenge do we see a do we see a challenge on the other side of the spectrum what is your view sir uh good evening to everyone and thank you for giving me this opportunity uh if you talk about the challenges in governance while adoption of new technologies uh, i will say that the human resource is a big challenge here the people are not very very you know uh, uh, acquainted to the technology simple simple technology so this is the major task moreover the inertia they have uh suppose i have taken initiative to uh, for the people to to go and take trainings but they are not interested so the motivation level while adoption of technology is the big issue uh, i can give examples of e office like uh, we have initiated e office but still the use of e office in the state of haryana is very very low uh other challenges are plenty but uh, overall uh, as i have served here for last 2 years and i also work as a scientist in central government 
so the what is going on uh, from it a scientist perspective what i have observed while seeing the things from a citizen perspective so uh, there are plenty of portals are coming up we are doing many things in this area but the point is that that the digital what we say governance when it comes to the governance we should always think about the people people first right. how this right. entire scenario is going to benefit them but i found that that here when i join here and i i i found that the people don't trust the government and similarly the government don't trust the people this is a very very you know dealing is between these two so i try to find out what could be the reason for it so i found that you know the entire one you know, of the approach in the government is that the ownership is lies with the government rather than the citizen this is the big issue so as the multiple system are evolving so the, the the suggestion here that the technical people are here that whenever we we you have designed hrms many system you have designed but the point is the surreal is there but you know i don't know who is accessing my account i don't know what the others you know the government what kind different different departments are doing with my data so there is such certain kind of you know some some trust building privacy and confidentiality must be built in the system the 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 way things look going forward i think there is this concept of hybrid uh, that keeps coming up that there are some data uh, which is probably very close or very important is kept uh, on the ground while probably you know uh, uh, data which is way uh, way uh, where you used to where you need to do analytics or where you need to do this slice and dice you kind of take it to the cloud uh, i think uh, wanted to have a, 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 a ganeshan sir's view uh is hybrid uh, the new normal should hybrid be used in school education is it being used in school education in haryana uh, if yes well, uh, yeah see uh, the covid 19 pandemic basically revolutionized the uh, traditional uh, teaching learning space so it is uh, it, the, the system has completely changed right. as of now though the teacher forms the, uh, the 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 primary part of the teaching learning process technology has come uh, to stay and it will be used uh, in the future also uh, covid or not no covid so uh, basically uh, you know when this covid 19 struck uh, then uh, the government of india and government of haryana brought out uh, numerous initiatives under the pm e vidya program and we also launched a number of applications to ensure that uh, learning uh, happens continuously so one such application was the avsar app that we launched which basically helped the teachers and students connect um, online right and uh, we i am very happy to share that technology was immediately lapped on uh, it, it was immediately accepted by uh, the government school teachers as well as the uh, Uh, students so it kind of answers your question that uh, whether hybrid is going to stay i'm sure it has uh, come to stay so i'll i'll just give you some figures what happened was about 20 lakhs uh, children uh, from all across uh, rural haryana they have logged into this application and used it for learning to uh, for practice and for taking assessments also almost 95 to 96% of the teachers are logged into uh, this particular system not only uh, have we been able to conduct the you know you know the regular quizzes and other things we have been able to conduct three uh, sats also in, in this and we were the only state in, in, in india which could issue online uh, progress report cards through this applications to be issued uh, online progress cards to about 24 lakh government school children to, through this application but then what has happened was uh, certain challenges also were uh, we faced certain challenges also uh, as this uh, online application started the major issue was the devices were not there for the children the children uh, had to depend upon their parents uh, for the devices mobile phones and children had to share two or three children had to share one uh, device so the time which was used by one particular child was uh, constantly reduced so the government of haryana has taken up a very ambitious project of giving computing tablets to the uh, children we have already placed orders for giving uh, computing tablets to 5 lakh children and this will be uh, start uh, this will be rolled out from april in the uh, this year and another 9 lakh children will be uh, given this computing tablets in the upcoming uh, year also what happens is that we have not restricted ourselves to giving the devices but we are going to giving uh, give academic content 
through a personalized and adaptive uh, learning algorithm so that every child is able to learn his uh, at his own uh, pace so that is one uh, major addition we are doing and also we are going to give them 2 gb data per child per day to every uh, each of them so that they have uh, sufficient data to access the content thank you so much sir thank you so much i think i'll just take this question a little ahead probably hitesh ji uh, question to you uh, we are witnessing i think a rapid shift in to digital and hybrid mode of education uh, also i think the national education policy is emphasizing uh, the need to em- embrace technology can you throw some light on your views on uh, how digital uh, penetration is happening in the education space uh yeah definitely uh, thank you very much because you know this uh, with the launch of this new education policy and haryana being the first state uh, to implement it we're going to implement it very very fast very quickly you see the challenging uh, challenges will be there although we uh, uh, the point of multi entry multi exit you know cross discipline choices uh, being into the uh, education so uh, even the new education policy uh, focuses on the extensive use of uh, technology for learning for teaching for the uh, you know, practical parts and everything and uh, what we think that digital penetration has to be done uh, in uh, just as dr ganesh has already described that you know reaching to the last mile you know to the last stone the student can uh, do because mobile is not enough you have to even especially into our technical education and especially into various cross disciplines you will have to give them some kind of uh, device which uh, where they can uh, use I even i one suggestion we had already put to the government is that we can use some kind of e library at the panchayat levels also where there are 8 to 10 computer systems are there and you know, high end and then we can you know, do some that kind of activity also but uh, what i can see that what uh, we'll have to do we'll have to talk about this uh, using in nep is uh, virtual reality the use of augmentation uh, augmented reality you know vr yes, ar and how we can use them because in our technical education and lot of skilling programs there are virtual labs there are labs or the skilling things we'll have to which have to show into the 3d effect so there these technology going to take very uh, lot of things here there and then there are issues like uh, uh, cyber security the issues like uh, cyber bullying you know there are a lot of things which uh, will have to be there and we we'll have to face them so uh, definitely in new education policy we have to go through all these uh, things challenges will keep on coming but education te- education technology use is 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 definitely required we can't say no to that and hybrid learning will always there when uh, said that whether it is covid or it is non covid kind of uh, situation so we are uh, all open to uh, these kind of challenges and definitely haryana the pace uh, which is following Uh, we going to be uh, always head into this kind of mission uh, following the government policies yeah very happy to hear that sir uh, i think another uh, bile haryana government i think has always been ahead of the curve and uh, always leading i think it's also uh, leading in many of the smart city solutions that has been implemented so uh, munish ji uh, i think this question is to you uh, how are smart city solutions like i triple c uh, leverage to modernize government processes and improve surveillance and security in the urban areas uh, has these technologies really helped and how is it being leveraged definitely yes um if you have ever been to chandigarh you must have noticed that you know there is a lot of discipline now even though the policeman is there or not so that discipline even at the level that the, you don't need to cross the zebra line that that discipline is there so definitely yes there smart city uh, solutions uh, no doubt they 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 help increase the surveillance part they help detect the crime um, that that uh, continuous video recording is there analytics is getting uh, over and over that data so uh, these smart cameras they are capable to detect overcrowding uh, these uh, uh fire incidents many 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 smart features are there which run on the data feeds which are coming from different locations to the back end and then uh, smart analytics is being done so definitely yes uh, with the um, uh, increase in surveillance and uh, uh, safety part uh, yes the discipline is also there so smart cities are definitely changing lives very very nice to hear that and i think uh, the way india has kind of led uh, from the front i think uh, from the uh, smart city program uh, i think it's one of the uh, 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 countries which ha- has probably the largest number of smart city projects uh, happening at a time uh, 
maybe just looking at uh, when, you, when you talk of digitalization, when you talk of, uh, uh, you know, data, uh, uh, one of the points that, and I'm sure uh, Deepak ji, you did address it, I think, very briefly. Uh, what are the challenges faced uh, when you look at data security and what are we doing to create awareness uh, for this uh, to be addressed? Uh, maybe a point of view? Yeah, actually earlier, 90% uh, um, of the application in the state government were running in the client server. So in that mode, the data was basically residing in the districts or in the offices where these applications were being run. Now in Haryana, our 99% application, or you can say 99.9 .9 application has, has been moved to uh, our web server architecture and has been moved to our state data center and which have robust security mechanism, which basically helps the uh, uh, manager of those data to restrain from any security threat because already we are taking care of all the, uh, uh, taking care of all the aspects of uh, uh, security of that data. Sir. Now, uh, as far as, uh, uh, what you call teaching our users. We are regularly conducting workshop for them just to, to uh, tell them how to keep safe their systems so that from their system, the, uh, the uh, uh, attack of virus is not penetrated into our systems. And continuously we are getting from uh, feedback from SAT.in and NIC headquarters and we are sanitizing the system if we, <clears throat> if we uh, come across any incidents of security threats. Very interesting. And I think this will be a constant process, right? It's not something that yeah. is a one-time effort. I think this is something that we'll have to do continuously over a period in time. Uh, I must this, add... Uh, just uh, yeah, just sorry to interrupt i i'll just add one point here absolutely see uh, government of haryana is also uh, has also set up information and security management office and uh, uh, this office is assisting all the state departments that is under it department and this this depart this uh, or small unit is assisting all the state organizations all the state department board corporations whosoever for the security assessment requirements for the security audit related requirements very recently, uh, three four months back, the this office also got the certain impaneled certification. So now this has en enhanced uh, the cap capability and capacities of the um, the in-house teams, the in-house departments that in-house uh, teams that now we are able to handle the request from any department. And we, as we were carrying out the activities earlier, now that stamping has already done from the certain. So that. Uh, that itself uh, says that we are uh, moving towards the secure coding and best coding practices. Absolutely, sir. And who knows uh, more uh, about security than us? Uh, so, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, uh, completely with you, sir. Completely with you. Uh, Aman, sir, uh, a question to you. Uh, while we talk about all, all these technologies, while we talk about uh, maybe data awareness, security awareness, uh, how is the uh, the the last mile? How is the common man kind of reacted to this? Uh, with all this digitalization of services happening, uh, has the nature of interaction uh, of people with the government changed? Has has that gone through undergone any change? Uh, what are your thoughts? Yes, yes, uh, absolutely. Uh, as I am in uh, public uh, information and public relation department, so if you talk about department and government to business, yes, absolutely, yes, we have developed some ERP software here and there are a lot of change. We have curve, we have in, uh, corruption, we have enhanced accountability, uh, we have enhanced transparency also. And if you look, uh, look from government to the citizens, there is also a lot of tremendous improvement. In Haryana, we have a very, very great uh, initiative, Saral. This is uh, taking the all more than 550 schemes of the government to the people at the grassroots level. Earlier, what had happened in Haryana, people have to move uh, government offices. There are plenty of government offices. So for every service, they have to visit multiple offices. But now the government, what has done, that a single window kind of arrangement is there. 
and people are accessing is going there and through the online also they can apply for any service so there is a lot of improvement and for that also i congratulate uh, munish ji also because of his initiative uh, the haryana also won a uh, first award in e governance so uh, this is great great but uh, here i want to add that we can also you know there is there are issue here uh, when it comes to the collection of data from the people the, you know for every scheme i am observing for every kind of scheme every kind of portal same kind of information is uh, coming from the people coming from the you know employees so uh, i i need here that state should take initiative or department of it should take initiative that they should come out with a long term plan that you know we have evolved a lot in it uh, in the digital governance also so a, a higher level plan must be there that what kind of data we do have and what kind of data we are missing so they have you know it will help us to analyze and the all everything that is predictive analysis you know big data analysis or rest on the this 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 amount of data so the point is that until unless we make a great you know strategy over it we cannot leverage this you know state data is immense data we can create so much value out of it this value is missing now so the point is that how we we should design some strategy that this value creation of this immense amount of state data should be there must be there can i add to it sir i Absolutely. can i can contribute how the state government is leveraging from this data sir you know data is the during, next gold sir so yeah, yeah, we yeah. all have to have during, to during during covid period we were we were thrown a challenge by by the state government that all the admission in the higher education technical education should be online so the challenge was that how we should verify the documents of the persons so what we have done is that we have integrated our online admission app application with other other applications other databases and you will surprise to know that 85% of our applications were straight away scrutinized through our system only and only 15% of application were sent to the field offices for verification apart from this haryana state government right now is in process of delivering proactive services to the citizen what proactive services means is that if state database has your verified caste certificate or verified income so you you straight away go to our counter and get the certificate across the counter and if your income or caste is not verified it will be automatically pushed to the field functionaries to verify it and we have set that uh, set, set up the timelines and un, under which he, so that the citizen should be able to get these services in in a proactive manner man now uh, digitization of data is one thing but we, my state is right now in in a mode of digitalization yeah. uh, but yes completely agree with you uh, deepak ji uh, there is no doubt about that uh, wanted to move by i have a lot, lot of questions uh, still pending but i think i would just want to touch one last piece uh, of the jigsaw puzzle and i think that completes the whole puzzle while we talk a lot about uh, digitalization we talk a lot about technology uh, i would like to ask munish chief step uh, uh, first up um, munish sir what's the steps see we also need a workforce right uh, to be able to manage all this digitalization all this technology we talk about ai we talk about ml we talk about ar vr uh, what are we doing to kind of upgrade skills and the digital literacy of our staff Uh, and probably ganesh sir ganeshan sir extend the question to you maybe after munish sir finishes uh, how we kind of taking care of these things at a, a, a school level or at an education level so that we have the next workforce coming out of school and coming out of the institutes ready uh, so i'll i'll give it over to uh, munish ji uh, maybe after that uh, uh, ganeshan sir you can talk about it from a uh, from a student point of view okay thank you see uh, there are two aspects of capacity building one is uh, when the capacity building happens at for masses at large and one is the capacity building activities for the specific domain oriented people the staff the officers at the uh, who are working with us so uh, for the second part uh, there are continuous skill upgradation uh, things which are going on the department has a separate capacity building wing 
which is taking care, care of the uh, which is doing the need assessment and doing the uh, capacity building in various specific skill set skill sets say uh, if you if you call open source open stack development or uh, data center or security all those aspects are taken care by one specific unit regarding the second part uh, uh, we took that initiative uh, uh, just before COVID and uh, that paid um, that was adopted even at the level of government of India. They were in discussions to replicate it throughout the country. That was that we created an e-learning platform. We called it ISLEX, that information security and e-learning platform that had the content uh, specifically for children, uh, for for female for uh, senior citizens and for children we incorporated the complete directory of the government schools in and private schools in Haryana. All the students they were given a small set of questions that e-learning so concept of e-learning was uh, uh, being propagated to build the cyber hygiene of the uh, of the students because the security starts from the children because you might be having very secure phone you know all all features all security but at home when the phone is with your kids, they know your password, they know everything and they they are very good in pressing OK whenever there is a prompt in the screen. <clears throat> so that building cyber hygiene was the motto and we created content from 5th to 8th and 8th to 12th class. That content we were able to create some part in with the uh, help of Nylit, with the help of uh, CDAC and with the with the team ISMO team which we have it here. So that was launched. A digitally signed uh, certificate uh, so that that was offered to all the students if the student crosses uh, that uh, after e-learning if he appears for the exam and he passes 50% uh, of the marks then a digitally signed certificate from the, as CISO of the state that was also being uh, issued to the uh, student so that was uh, so that in case he's not able to get 50% marks then again he can do e-learning and then he again he can attempt so there are there is no limit on the number of attempts and the randomized question set was being offered so this is the kind of uh, initiative which haryana has already taken to build the capacity besides going uh, in districts carrying out workshops when the uh, demonetization started uh, after the demonetization um, uh, was announced there was a lot of fear among the citizens uh, and the officers also at large that what will happen if we do a cashless transaction so because they were doing it for the first time so we had information security blended with the cashless part and that trainings were given uh, online content was shared and uh, for for training not only for the uh, for the uh, uh, officers but also at public at large that that thing was done so th there are various steps i hope uh, uh, dpr aman aman sir would uh, and uh, uh, Srinivasan sir would, would be uh, throwing more light on what kind of other capacity building programs they are they are had handling. This is what we are contributing. Thank you. Your views, uh, Ganeshan sir? Well, in the uh, school education department, we have been mandated with this important task of preparing the future workforce of the country. Absolutely. So, um, I'm uh, happy to say that Haryana has actually gone beyond the national mandate of providing free compulsory education to the primary level. We have uh, taken it a step uh, ahead. So I'll uh, talk about two initiatives whereby we are kind of uh, preparing the uh, future workforce. So one uh, basically is that we have introduced the concept of model Sanskriti schools. Uh, it might be right or wrong, but then there has been a growing demand uh, everywhere uh, for English medium schools and for CBC affiliated schools, right? So that uh, has been kind of projected to produce better quality. So we have started about 138 uh, this English medium uh, CBSC schools uh, in the state with an idea of kind of uh, no, preparing uh, uh, them and then uh, getting them uh, better opportunities in life once they pass out of the schools. And in the upcoming year, we are going to expand it to about 500 schools. And I'm uh, very happy to share that the enrollment last year went about 27% uh, only because of this uh, model schools. About uh, 30,000 more students, even from the private sector, uh, moved on into this uh, government schools and it has got a very moderate fees and it has got very high quality teachers in them and uh, uh, going beyond the secondary level we have we have a program called as the super 100 program 
whereby the uh, meritorious children uh, from the uh, schools right who who, uh, who pass out 10th so they are given a two year kind of a coaching program and we prepare them for competitive exams like the iit je and uh, neat right and it started in 2018 and over the years basically we have seen uh, that uh, that has been a tremendous response and uh, last year we were able to send children uh, studying in government schools to premier institutions in the country like uh, iits and even into the all india institute of medical sciences uh, delhi so uh, our children are studying computer science in uh, iit bombay uh, in, in most other iits of the country and in uh, medical colleges also more than 90 school children uh, government school children and uh, if you and look at the, if you look at the profile profiles are from very Poor uh, socio-economic background, but then uh, the, through this government programs, we have been able to kind of uh, prepare them and then uh, send them. So the government is uh, planning to expand uh, such initiatives. Really uh, wonderful to hear. I've always heard Rihanna has been ahead of the curve, and I think interacting with you, gentlemen, uh, I think that's made that conviction far more stronger. Like to thank each one of you, uh, Ganeshan sir, Aman sir, Hitesh ji, uh, Munish sir, uh, Deepak ji. Uh, thank you so much for taking your time out. and coming here and sharing your views with us i uh, look forward to being in touch and working together thank you so thank much you, have a nice thank day you. nice evening thank, thank you sir thank you sir thank you